No, no, he's, he's progressing, and uh, he did not go through practice today. Um, I believe our club will put out some uh, some level of more information later, but he, he, he's progressing. Sounds like Mike was upgraded a little bit. Do you think it might get him on Wednesday? I personally don't think so. They, they, they say that it is questionable. He moved around okay today. I think one of the things that we're all uh, aware of, concerned of, he, he felt like last year he, he was in rehab a lot, then we'll go play, then go rehab and treatment, and then go play, and never really got ahead of it. And my advice to him, my direction, our direction to him is, you come back when you feel like you're not going to be chasing. I don't want him chasing. And so when he comes back, he'll be good to go, and we expect that to be good enough to sustain, you know, longevity. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if that means he's playing um, in Detroit tomorrow or, or not yet. But Joel is good to go. He's back to back. So yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing for him. There's been no, um, there's been no restrictions given to me in any way, shape, or form. You know, back to backs, uh, minutes. I think just general common sense will prevail as the season probably gets a little bit deeper. I mean, it's quite interesting to me, in early parts of this year already, people have you know, sat on some back-to-back, -back, some profile players. With Joel, um, we've, uh, we've, we've been advised to play him, as I just said. I don't know how much you make of like, assist versus turnover numbers, but if you go back to March when Mark Kell came back, he's been pretty good in that category, high assist numbers, low turnovers. What have you seen with his handle, his decision-making in particular when he runs the offense? I mean, I, I, th I think it is safe. Um, that, that's not always good to me. Like, I, I want him being proactive, attacking, getting to the rim, dunking, you know, find the rim. Like, I think once you, you find the rim and you think I'm attacking a big or I'm going to dunk, everything else opens up after that. The game actually becomes easier. And I do think that he has played safe. I think he's been conservative. And I think that that, that is a, at times, a good thing. But I really want him you know, playing with, with an edge and being proactive. Those assist to turnover numbers that you're saying, it is, uh, it is a, a, a good stat, you can't deny that. But I don't want to backpedal from my belief that is, is that he will be his best when he's attacking, when he's playing downhill and aggressive. And sometimes that might come with, with a little bit of pain. If Penn's, Ben's not able to go tomorrow, how much more do you hope to get from Markel if at all? Well, of course, you know, we hope to get more from everybody. You're missing a, a, a crown jewel, one of our crown jewels in Ben Simmons. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go with how you know what, what I'd say. We'll go with, with Markel and TJ. We'll figure out what that game looks like, who deserves to be on the, game, on the court at the end of the game. And, uh, you know, that's my, my mindset as it relates to if we do not have Ben Simmons, how, uh, how, are we, how am I going to handle it? With Mike, the official language is uh, questionable, questionable. For tomorrow, but you kind of are erring on the side of caution with that. With Ben, the language is doubtful. Are you looking at he's probably not going to be going tomorrow? Um, I, I feel like it's smarter for me to do that, you know, and if, if I wake up and I get pleasant, you know, surprises, so be it. But nobody's nobody said he's definitely not playing. They, that, that's as candid as I can be. But I just feel like for me, you know, it's best for me to think like I just answered that question and uh, it'll be an easy answer if somebody says, well, he's available. Okay, you know, I think that solution is, uh, is more obvious than trying to game plan in the event that, that he is not there. Would Wilson and Mike both progressing and getting close to the back? Are you seeing a little bit of light on trying to kind of figure out your actual rotation? Well, you think you do, but, you know, until you, you, until you have it, it, it's just you're just trying to do what we've been doing the last few games and and I'm fine with that You know, we're a lot further along than we we were in Boston I think the perfect storm of the injuries and Dario and foul trouble and you're playing a good Boston team and You know the anxiety of opening night and all that stuff We 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 you know that got the better of us and so I think that we've settled in a little bit more but in relation to you know, feeling like now, now I see it, here we go. I'm not there yet because we haven't been there. And I think that, that Wilson's a little bit behind Mike 
And again, we don't know what's going to happen with Ben tomorrow. So you take what you got and you make it work. And we will continue to study that, obviously, once we know, you know, the, the, the players that you're going to fight with. How big of a challenge will it be for him being tomorrow with the matchups that he's going to have against Detroit? I can't think of many nights where we're not going to say the same thing. Like, yep, I hear you. And those, you know, Drummond and Grip Lake, uh, yep, I, I get it. And, you know, we'll be the next night you're going to talk about, you know, somebody on, on, on Milwaukee. Um, they're big. You know, they're big challenges. Rarely am I going to say they're not. Uh, Brett, assuming that J.J. would be the guy who moves into the starting lineup with Ben out, where does the offense come from in the second unit in that sort of situation? Right. I think I have to not look at it like you just said, and I hear you. I, I've got to try to do what I did last year with keeping different people on the floor in staggering minutes. And so trying not to look at it like a first group, second group, you know, trying to get, you know, either jo JoJo or JJ out sooner and, you know, bringing him and keeping one of them on the court longer and probably staggering some of those especially those two situations and then being balanced enough at the end of the game to end with Joel and JJ. But I think like the firepower is going to have to come from a team thing. You know, we have different people that on a night, you know, could find ways to score, but I think it's more collective than it is individual. And without Ben and, you know, say Wilson and, and Mike, um, it's got to be sort of done by committee more than you know, trying to turn Sham at loose as an example. Brother, has there been anything aside from his body, his condition, that stood out to you about Joel early on that's allowed him to be so successful? I think it's his spirit, which is so connected to his health, is the thing that most stands out to me. Like, he, he's been an incredible, him and Ben, you know, I, I hope that I'm saying the same truthful comment all year, but they, they just have been A pluses in film session and, and shoot around and practices and walk through. I mean, think about the different environments you're in as an NBA coach and player where it's not always practice. It could be shoot around, it could be a strength and condition session, it could be a film room, it could be just a team discussion in a hotel. They, they, they're leaders. And so I think that. That, that Joel's spirit, led by he's healthy and happy, is uh, is just contagious, and they, he's taken that environment and really grown his uh, his desire and his ability to 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 lead. Fred, I think the back-to-back the -back numbers are down league wide this year. You guys only played nine of them. I think there's 14 last year. It might have something right. to do with the London game too, and having some squash at the back end. But does, it, does that make a big deal for you guys at this point? I mean, this is where I think this is where I think it, it does uh, it does help a little bit. I, I think in general, back to backs are a little overrated. You know, we all come in and say the same thing. In that Orlando played the night before. You know, let's start out great because they're going to get tired. Um, I, I don't. I, I see it a little bit, but not to the level others do. So maybe in that regard. It's an advantage. I, I also see, and I'd love to have somebody do this math on this. I think teams that play the night before start games in a rhythm. Like they just kept down playing, you know, 18 hours earlier, 24 hours earlier. And so I'm not quite sure how to read it. I think if you had your druthers, you'd choose rest. You wouldn't play back to backs. But having said that, I think there's a little bit of those situations being overrated. Are these, uh, are these two teams, Detroit and Milwaukee, that Pique your interest in the East, um, with what they have, and long-term thinking throughout the season. I'm sure you'd say that about a lot of teams. Would you, you I would. I, I like the two coaches. I respect the two coaches. You know, it's uh, one I work with for 12 years, one from a distance. You know, I got great respect for. And you know, like they, they're both coming in new, new to their respective programs, and you know, veteran NBA coaches and. It's just uh, I have time for both of the, those coaches and, you know, the respect I have for and just the NBA players in general and those guys that Detroit have and, and Giannis and company, it's the NBA. We, we expect nothing less than, than fistfights.